Hey everyone, welcome back. I am here with the June Cards, Tags, and More Kit. There are these beautiful watercolor papers, some plain white cardstock, a set of uh, FOSS stitching tag dies. Just remember to be um, careful when you're pulling them off don't just you know pull them up hard but it does peel off it peels off easy but I wouldn't want to like just yank one off and risk potentially bending it some prima flowers uh, little prima butterflies a uh, butterfly and flower stamp here a couple of packs of jewels and some seam binding. To start, I am going to take my paper and dies over and start getting some tags made up. All of these tags are what I was able to get out of just a single sheet of the white cardstock. So I have four of the largest ones, four of the second largest, five of the middle sized ones, four of the next to smallest, and I believe seven of the smallest tacks out of a single sheet of cardstock. Now I'm going to make some die cuts of the pattern paper that was in the pack. So I was kind of sorting them. I wanted to see all of the colors. So I separated them since there's two of each sheet in there. So at first I started with just four of those pattern papers, more or less making a 12 by 12 sheet out of them then off I go to start making those die cuts. This is my first set out of those four sheets. I was close to having the same amount um, when I have to take in to the edges of those six by sheets, six by six sheets into consideration. I didn't get quite as many but I did get very close to the same amount as my white tags. But then as I was cutting and I started thinking about the lines on the back, I decided to go back and get the other two prints that I hadn't already used so that I could just cut more very specifically to have more of the lined papers showing. And now I have all of the tags cut out that, that I want to do right now. So if you're using the die cutter on the mat, you're going to want to make sure that your on there as perfectly as possible since the whole 12 by 12 sheet is being used. Now for a manual cut, now this is just a piece of uh, cardstock for my stash that I grabbed up just to use as my example sheet. You can print out those templates. Alright, on the printout I did make them to be 4 by 6 so that they would be easier to line up uh, with the edges in the bottom of the paper. The first thing that you're going to want to do if you do print out these as templates uh, just cut out that slot on your printout so that you'll either be able to cut through it or you know make some marks with a thin pencil or something like that. Um, you could try to keep them lined up, maybe tape them down in place with some artist's tape, uh, maybe the repositional glue. I just like to do one layer at a time just so I don't have to worry about my template sliding on me. Now you don't have to try and 
I cut the circles. Um, they are one eighth inch. So if you have a one eighth inch punch, you can just punch out lined up on those uh, little um, the the ed the ends the ends of the slot and those are there so that there's a little bit more give in that slot so there won't be tearing um, when you're getting your tags in and out of it okay so with that all uh, cut out that template ready to go line it up get it straightened out and I just use a fine pencil a mechanical pencil there and give myself some guidelines instead of trying to trace it all I just give myself some guidelines to use for my ruler and I do use a metal ruler just because I have had my craft knife catch and dig into rulers that have a plastic edge so if you have a plastic ruler just be mindful of that and I just line my ruler up on my guidelines and carefully cut across where that opening is going to be this because it is a 12 by 12 sheet is where um, if you have a the crocodile 2 you can punch much easier just because it allows for a deeper punch so there you have it a way to manually add your slots into your folio if you don't have an electronic cutting machine I put the paper I use or I'm using on my cutting mat with what with the part that will be folded inside down on the sticky surface just in case there's any residue when I am doing a manual cut I I flip the paper over so that I'm cutting through the backside that way any marks that I do make they will ju I won't have to worry about erasing them or whether they erase fully because then they will just be folded inside when the folio gets folded up just like there I just wrote marking and cutting on the side that would be folded inside now for the score lines uh, very simple a score line at four inches and eight inches for the main sections there and then rotate 90 degrees and add a score line at the six inch mark so now you see um, what I meant by the part that's folded inside once it's all together you won't even know the marks are in there and you can see that like my manual one now with it folded up that single slot page is the third section so now I'm gonna go back and just work on the one that I am gonna be using for the completed project and then on this one instead of trimming uh, right now I don't know if I will trim or not I'm just putting a score at the half inch mark above where the uh, barcode and names are on that sheet I would have done this originally I forgot that I I forgot that I had made allowances um, just to have a little bit of extra bend they're they're only half inch total so I go out a quarter inch to the left and a quarter inch to the right and add a couple more score lines next to those score lines that are at the four and eight inch mark and there you have it my base is ready for the next step which will be working on the little inside pockets while I was waiting for my pockets to cut out I decided to finally take this moment to switch out my Tim Holtz mat I have all of the different sized pockets cut out I do use some of my own uh, white cardstock in this project just because I was making a lot of different example cuts so if some of them seem like not exactly the same color it was probably from one of my own sheets 
Uh, as you can see, I do have I have a lot of different pockets. I do have the measurements up on the blog. They're labeled so the slots line up and the pockets fit. So if you don't have an electronic cutting machine and you're going to be cutting these out by hand, they're all the same width. I think I have them at three and a quarter inches. I don't actually remember right off hand right now. I've done so many measurements, but you can just print them out and make templates to line up your slots on them. Uh, you don't need to use a scoreboard. I do have them measured so that they should just be able to be folded in half and they will fit in their designated areas. There's a couple might have to be folded slightly more than half, but you can just do that and kind of adjust once you have them in your folio depending on exactly how you have your margins around your edges. So all of them just like that made to fold in half. You can use a scoreboard, you can do it by hand. Um, I did just this one on the scoreboard. The rest I just did by hand. They're on the inside so whether your creases are absolutely perfect or not is not necessary. This side easy enough. I only have one tag slot in there in the center so there's just this one. You can see this is one of the ones that once I had it attached I just folded it up just a little bit more. Easy fix. Doesn't have to be perfect. Gives a little bit of wiggle room. That one I was just showing if you didn't want to take the time to make a full folded pocket with a reinforcement slot on it you could just take a a rectangle of cardstock and glue it around the four sides and just sort of make a backing for your little slots to make little pockets like that I have my pockets like this because I do want the extra layers to reinforce that opening you can use whatever adhesives you have and are comfortable with double-sided tapes a scotch tape glider uh, art glitter glue uh, the tacky glues PVA glues anything that's appropriate for paper to paper adhesion I like using a combination personally just because I think it adds some extra strength so I do use a combination of double-sided tape and art glitter glue. This is quarter inch double-sided tape and I line it up just above uh, the tops of the holes on the top and on the and just below them on the bottom just to get a nice seal at that opening. So to start I just go through I add my double-sided tape just to kind of speed up the process instead of doing totally one pocket at a time. I'm just going to go over this pocket uh, step by step because I do do them all the same. So after I have my double-sided tape on I come in and draw a very fine line with my art glitter glue around the edges so that it will be sealed completely so I don't have any gaps or areas that can be snagged up and then I just come in here and line up my two slots I do not push it down all the way until I have a chance to hold it up, flip it over, and make sure that everything is lined up where I want it. Which is also the benefit of using a liquid glue with double-sided tape because that liquid glue will allow for a little bit of extra movement on top of double-sided tape before everything gets pushed together. Then I just come through my fingernail right there worked just fine on removing uh, any excess glue that had squeezed out into my slot. And like I said, this one here, um, I just folded it up just a little bit more 
because it was a little past where I wanted it to be but I wasn't too worried about it uh, it's an easy enough fix it's an internal pocket now for folding up and closing my pockets this is some 1 8 inch double sided tape that I very carefully line up around along those edges you don't need to use double sided tape here I'm sure I could have done perfectly fine with just some glue but I have an, a philosophy that there's no such thing as too much adhesive sometimes that backfires on me but I like to make sure that things stay where I put them okay so before I added my glue I had started trying to add it and then I remembered I may want to make sure the top stays closed so I came back in and I just added for this pocket I added two strips of quarter inch double sided tape for most of my pockets I only needed one I just added the extra because this had the little bit of extra fold up and then I come in same as when I put the the slots together I add some art glitter glue that helps because the art glitter glue dries fully it helps seal against the edge of that double sided tape so there isn't uh, I don't have to worry about a sticky edge it does just help fill in any gaps and really just make sure that everything's going to stay put and when I when I do these edges and I say I put a fine line down I put a very very fine line down exactly along the edge of my 1 8 inch tape there and then I just add a little bit extra on the tape and then I do the same thing for the top of the pocket then all that's left is folding it up grabbing my bone folder and really making sure that those edges are sealed up and then you can use your bone folder uh, one of the tags to just make sure that there isn't any glue you may not have noticed that would stick your paper together where you don't want it now I'm gonna go over different options I do have the measurements for for all of these different options there is the one option here where you can have a separate pocket for each slot I have one where it is one lawn pocket all you have to do is make sure that at each slot seal up against the paper so there aren't any gaps I have cuts for making a combination pocket for the bottom two slots of the three slot panel with a pocket separate pocket for the top slot and I have one to make the top two slots a single pocket with uh, a separate pocket for the bottom shorter slot so different combinations whichever one that you think will work best for what you want for the panel that has two slots I have a cut where you can turn uh, both slots into a single combined pocket or you can make two separate pockets one for the top slot one for the bottom slot in the end I make a separate pocket for each slot so I do have a total of six pockets on my finished one and this is one of the main reasons why I'm gonna I'm gonna kinda try to show you with just kinda holding it together um, if you do make everything a single pocket then your top pockets will show up in your bottom pockets through the little I mean it's not a big show but 
when you have separate pockets, then they just sort of disappear when they go into their respective pockets, so they don't show up in any lower slots. All right, so I'm just going to finish up my pockets, working from the bottom up on the other two panels, and be right back. I have all of my pockets in place and I have just used some of my quarter inch double sided tape to go around the entire thing. I did, I did leave my little flap there. I have double sided tape on it um, just to help protect the bottoms of those pockets when I fold everything up. Sort of a, a little pocket for the ends of those pockets. So now I want to add my closure and I am just going to use the seam binding. Well part of the seam binding for this. So when I add the seam binding, because this is a tri-fold folio, I am going to want that seam binding to come out part way across at the spine that is uh, between the second and third panel. It's half inch seam binding I measured up three inches and just made a couple little marks to help me line up my seam binding. So now with that uh, little slot which I, I just cut through real carefully with my craft knife. So with that little slot when everything is folded up, I will be able to tie it closed. I'm just trying to kind of get uh, the seam binding so that the ends hanging off are about the same length. So I was just kind of measuring from where it came out of this spine to the end of it so that I can have about the same amount coming off um, the other side. I'm just using some quarter inch double sided tape um, just to hold it in place and keep it from sliding around while I continue putting the rest of the folio together. I don't put my double sided tape in the spines. I, I don't really uh, want to keep adding layers to where all my bins are but for this I just kind of want the double sided tape to help hold my seam binding in place uh, with a little bit of glue to go in with it. To work on uh, the end of the seam binding that comes out of the edge here. I just peeled up the backing on my double sided tape so that I could feed uh, feed it through while I worked with everything and kind of tried to work out where I would be going as my next step. I wanted to add some color to my inside hinge area to the inside folds. I didn't want it too thick. I I wanted to add I wanted to add a little bit of layering on the inside, especially where I have the tie coming out of that slot, so the slot has more layers and would be less likely to maybe tear. But I couldn't figure out what I had that was thin enough. I had originally thought of using some of the pattern paper from the kit, but I didn't I didn't want to use something that thick. So as 
I was just hating on to that paper pack and trying to brainstorm what to do, I noticed the cover sheet, which has that section that has all of the different uh, color blocks on it that is in the pack, and it is very thin, like printer paper thin. So the parts that have writing on it, I used for the inside stabilization. I couldn't quite decide what I wanted to do to hold it in place. So I used quarter inch double sided tape and carefully put it in between the score lines where there will be folding and then added a little bit of glue just to hold that in place added some extra glue to the slot just to give it a nice seal um, and cleaned up any excess that goes out of the slot so it wouldn't make that seam binding stiff for the two strips of that cover sheet that I'm using on the inside, I cut them one inch wide and I just use one inch double sided tape on them to put them in place until I get ready to finish the inside. At this point in time, I didn't know exactly how I would be finishing up the inside. I just wanted these pieces to be in place so that I could have the majority of the base construction finished so that I would be able to close it up, get it sealed up, and let all of the glue dry. I wanted to add a little extra strength to the end of the seam binding that comes out of the edge of the front cover. You can use some eyelids, you can use some brads, you could throw in a couple of stitches. You don't have to add anything if you don't want to. I just really wanted to make sure that it stayed put and being tied wouldn't stretch it out too much or have it tear paper or anything like that. In the end, what I did decide on is to staple it in place. I I made sure the bottoms of the staple would be the part that was folded in so that the tops of the staple would be on the surface and be able to maintain a smoother finish. So after I had my staples in, I wanted to make sure that I got everything as flat as possible. So I grabbed up my bone folder and I really just kind of pushed that staple down, worked out the, the curves from the bottom as much as I could, just so I would have a smooth of a finish as possible. All of my main pieces are in place and now I am ready to get the edges sealed up and start my work on the decorating. I just peel off the backings of my double sided tape all the way around, add in some glue, and really push it down, make sure everything's sealed up, and let that glue dry. All right, with my main base, dry. I am ready to just add in the last little bit of seam binding on the outside of the hinges. I wanted to, I just really wanted to make sure that those hinges, because they are cardstock, um, would just have some extra strength and stability for opening and closing. The first thing I did was just fold one of them in half so that I could make a slot for the tie to feed through. For the outside hinges, 
I used my 1 8 inch double sided tape I let it go off the ends a little bit just so that when I trimmed down the seam binding um, it would help keep it from fraying I also have a little bit of glue to help hold it in place but the double sided tape isn't necessary I do however think that it helps it helps keep pieces in place while you wait for your liquid glue to dry once again I I went in between the bend marks so that the double sided tape wouldn't be on the folds and I just added that to both of them added my my glue and put my seam put my seam binding down in place and then let that dry if you want to sort of shave off that inner flap so that you have a smoother closure after it was all put together is when I decided to take it over to my paper cutter and when I say I shaved it off I did maybe a sixteenth of an inch at a time I only have about an eighth of an inch total taken off just enough to not really make a visual difference but to allow a little bit of a smoother closing.